want to welcome you guys. If you don't know, the Blockchain Center opened up about two months ago. Um, we are a co-working office in event space for cryptocurrency and blockchain companies. We do a lot of educational events. Our goal is to make Miami the best educated city in the world when it comes to this technology. There's a lot happening in this city and the state of Florida when it comes to making blockchain and Bitcoin mainstream. And we and all of you guys are just a part of this. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker. His name is Matt Quinn. Um, he is from San Francisco, and he's done some Bitcoin 101s with us in the past before. I'm sure you're going to love what he talks about. It's very important, especially to what we're doing here at the center, which is community building. We're going to see in this new decentralized economy that this, this way of marketing that's worked before, where it's very much top down, where it's very much you know decentralized channels telling us what's important. Now it's going to be communities, it's going to be trusting individuals, it's going to be word of mouth. So uh, I'm going to be interested in your presentation, and here you go. Thank you. Everybody give it up for Erica. Thank you for giving me more and more reasons to come visit. Uh, all right. All right. I'm just going to go. Uh, so I'm Matt. I was born and raised in South Florida. So again, thank you, Erica, for giving me reasons to come back. Uh, I got started on uh, prehistoric financial systems a while back. I'm really interested in Bitcoin. I uh, started a theory to meet up, started a co working space called Starfish. I uh, got involved with this next generation project called Nervos. And uh, from here, let's go to infinity and beyond. Uh, so I always like to start with the question of why. Uh, so why are we here? Uh, Anybody really interested in cryptography? All right, we got a few people. Um, um, we've, we've had uh, crypto communities before. Um, this is a listing of the cypherpunks. Uh, they had a community in San Francisco. Uh, they also started a mailing list, which is the mailing list that Satoshi dropped the Bitcoin white paper on. Uh, is anybody? Uh, yes, the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. Uh, so these, these are all very important, but I don't think it quite sums up you know, what we have in the room today. Uh, is anyone really interested in open source? All right, we've got a few people. And we, we've had open source communities for a while. Uh, this is a, an example of the Linux community. They've got a great little penguin. Uh, is anybody really interested in cryptocurrency? OK, yeah, this, this starts to sound more like it. And we have memes as well. So this, I feel like, starts to sum up what we're doing here. So, you know, how do we get from crypto anarchists and penguins with Linux to Doge? And uh, what's happening is uh, you have this cryptocurrency. Uh, so, currency is money. Uh, money is a very human thing. It's like agriculture or language. You know, it's a simple part of our society. And cryptocurrency serves a simple fundamental purpose. I think we, we can get really ahead of ourselves in terms of like it does require you know, significant uh, innovation to implement these technologies, but the purpose that it's serving is very simple. Uh, so something like a wheel or a mirror or a zipper, you know, very simple things. You know what I mean? So these were developed by lots of people experimenting, and nobody really cares about you know, how these things are created or who invented them. And the really exciting things only come once the foundation is built. So that's how we get things like Gucci or lasers or Lambos, you know, because we have these you know, foundations that they're built on. And um, the foundations of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are pretty simple. They're really just math. Um, we can do crypto by hand if we wanted to. Uh, when we add technology to them with peer-to-peer -peer networks and machines, uh, we get something much bigger. So all of a sudden we can maybe replace you know, this crazy banking system with something that looks like this. And I think the most important thing when we're replacing this is this, Bitcoin, currency. So currency and money has a very important role to play in our world. And a community is created through a currency. Uh, so you look at something like a shopping mall or a bazaar, if we all share the same currency, we're implicitly part of a community. Um, and now currency is created through crypto. And we've seen this happen in the old communities. Uh, you look at these meetup groups, uh, so I frequented meetups uh, prior to getting involved in crypto, and the idea of like a couple million people kind of you know joining a community around something is a, a bit crazy. I still continue to be fascinated every time I come to an event. You know, 30 people show up, 40 people show up to talk about crypto, and what we're seeing emerge are social structures out of this. Uh, so back in the Stone Age in the 20th century, uh, we had other social structures, uh, things like religion or uh, Rotary Club, AA, you know, these, these are ways that people are coming together. 
Um, and apparently the internet is taking away America's religion, according to MIT. Um, and you can see it, it plays out in this chart here. Um, as internet use goes up, um, the number of people who are unaffiliated with religion is going up as well. And uh, yeah, the internet, the global village. Uh, so crypto, uh, when I look at this, this picture, which is the church, and then this picture, which is the crypto meetup, uh, they look kind of similar. Um, and I think, you know, all these people came here to see Andreas Antonopoulos. Um, he was a great speaker, he's not a, not a preacher, he's not a religious speaker at all. Uh, but all these people came together to listen to this person talk. And uh, here are the reasons that I found that people come to crypto meetups. Uh, personal transformation, financial transformation, innovation, but also people. Uh, I think in these, these social structures, people are coming together to meet each other. And I think we have this tonight. I think the, the most important thing in these crypto meetups is the networking time. And then, you know, this is more of a formality. You guys are listening to me talk. Hopefully it's great. Uh, but I think the real reason that people come is to meet other people. And um, we've had all these companies emerge out of this. Um, this is just one of many uh, charts that look like this. Uh, yeah, there's another one. Um, but I, I think the, the sum of this, or the whole, is really what's important. And that, that is the communities. Uh, communities are not companies. Uh, they're very different. And uh, I think crypto will continue to show us how they're different. Uh, we have different rules. So if you take something like Coca-Cola, uh, which is owned by shareholders and owned by trademark. If you tried to produce anything that had Coca-Cola on it, uh, someone would sue you, you'd be put out of business really quickly. If you try to compare that to Bitcoin, it doesn't really line up. Um, if you wanted to manufacture a Bitcoin shirt today, um, I don't think anyone would come and stop you. Um, so also in communities, there's no corporate structure, communities can morph. You really can't be fired from a community. Uh, you can be kind of exiled, uh, but it's a very different process. And this is meant to, to explain that uh, communities are not companies. Uh, so traditionally, uh, companies are like pyramids. They're top down, uh, but that's not the case in a community. Uh, community, I, I don't know what this is, but it, it reminded me of kind of like what a community is like. It's, it's a bit of a mess. There's no structure to it. Um, people do, however, kind of gravitate around like good ideas and people that are effective. There's definitely uh, gravity in it that pulls people together. Uh, but no one is telling people what to do or what to go or where to go. Uh, if any of you weren't interested today, like you just wouldn't show up. And I think on a broader scale, that, that has the effect of um, people like making uh, dispersed decisions. Uh, the power is with individuals. People will choose what they want to do. Uh, There's also an open door. Uh, people can enter and leave a community at any time. Uh, that also kind of changes the character of things. You get all sorts of people that come into these communities, and that's not always a good thing. Uh, for the most part, it's great because people are awesome. Uh, Wikipedia showed us that. Uh, people are also remixing things. Uh, so we have something like Bitcoin that was remixed into Ethereum. Uh, then we had Bitcoin turn into Bitcoin Cash, we had Ethereum turn into Ethereum Classic, and people are free to do this. And this is again part of the community aspect. Um, if this were a company, um, Bitcoin could say, you know, Ethereum can't copy what I'm doing and change it. Um, so this presents a different kind of competition. Um, instead of a race, which you know, in some ways technology is a race, uh, it's more of a marketplace of ideas. Uh, people are competing for the the best ideas and to get people to contribute to their protocols, to come and attend their events, to talk about what they're working on. Uh, okay, I'll switch gears here and uh, talk about risks and challenges. So one of the biggest risks is money. I think it's very hard to monetize a crypto project. Uh, it's all open source software. A lot of these things are being built by passionate people giving freely of their time. And if those people need to be supported, um, they still need money at the end of the month. And I think for a while, we were, um, were selling tokens, or the Bitcoin price goes up, and that has enabled a lot of innovation, but we still don't quite have like a fundamental, uh, or I guess a sustainable funding model for these projects. Uh, second risk is people. Uh, people are pretty, uh, I don't know, they're human. They, they do good things, they do bad things. Um, sometimes people in communities have kind of like their own self-interest. Sometimes that isn't in the interest of the whole. And this is just a challenge that we have to navigate. Uh, so what works? So of course, Buddhism is great. Um, but I think 
Uh, an appreciation of the challenge is the first place to start, and then doing simple things. I think um, something as simple as uh, making sure that there's you know coffee and bagels at your meetup. You know that goes a long way. And I think the things that work in crypto communities are simple because at the end of the day, you're really just bringing people together and creating an atmosphere where they connect. Uh, also, being a good person, helping each other, um, that's really important. At this point, I'm going to move over here so I can read my notes. Um, so yeah, learning from each other. Uh, communities are very personal. Uh, also, keeping that open door. Uh, so people naturally want to be a part of these communities. They naturally want to help each other. And relationships are built on trust. So if you create this atmosphere where people can come in and they can grow, uh, then things are going to flourish. And I think places like this, I've always been amazed that how they grow. Uh, I remember coming in this room where it was just an empty room and now it's filled with people and chairs and furniture and who knows a year from now what it'll be filled with. And I think all that happens just from allowing people to be a part of it. Um, so we'll do some math here. So we, we learned that uh, currency equals community. We also learned that currency now equals crypto. Uh, so community does equal crypto if we're if the math checks out. Uh, so. I've seen a lot of uh, businesses try to grow around crypto and try to pay their way through the community part, but a lot of that is missing the forest for the trees. Uh, because this is currency, it really is just driven by community, and that, that can't be forced by any one party or someone wanting to promote something. It really goes with the, the will of the people. Uh, so where do we go from here? Um, so what we have here is a foundation. So I've seen uh, companies start, I've seen people get jobs, I've seen uh, all sorts of new groups form just in this kind of foundation. So I would say to you that you, you have this opportunity to start whatever you want or to take things where you want to go. Uh, so connect. Uh, find people you agree with, find people you disagree with, uh, argue with them, try to build things. Uh, more than anything, just make the, the most important thing in, say, coming to these events or navigating crypto communities to connect with others. Uh, and from there, you know, light a match. Uh, start something. A lot of things don't work out, um, things fizzle out, but you know, if there's something you're interested in, if you want to start a company, just start working on it, start pulling people in, and you might be surprised by you know, what, what takes. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is a quick talk.